The following is a presentation of The Day. Thanks for joining us. This is another episode of Live Lunch Break. My name is Rick Coster. We are streaming live at theday.com. You are eating lunch, and you're also going to hear uh, a really special, talented guitar player from Danielson. Um, one of the cool things about Live Lunch Break, I'm not going to say I'm astonished because we suspected it all along, was that gradually we have expanded the talent pool, if you will, from just beyond this area, and this is a good example. Uh, Brant, great player, heard about it, contacted us, made the long three-night trek from Danielson to get here. And I think you're gonna see an astonishing player today. Uh, you'll catch a lot of antecedents in standard uh, blues structures, but a uh, little bit of jazz chording. He's really good at throwing in the minor chord hooks and the choruses. and. Just an amalgam of great stuff, and it all comes out. Brant Taylor, welcome. Have it my friend. 
a new song I just wrote.
Lose yourself in the possibilities for your home, yard, heart, and soul. Come to Farms and see what we're building for you. Offshore, out in the sound, your island getaway awaits. Yes, Block Island beckons. With so much to do and see, a Block Island getaway is now closer than ever. Ride the high-speed Block Island Express from New London on one of four daily departures. Where an island escape is yours at GoBlockIsland.com. That's GoBlockIsland.com. So by doing the house and trade-in, you know, that we use that towards our, our down payment towards this um, condo, and uh, it made life so much easier for us. Um, it took all the worry out of everything. You can keep tuning. Hey, you're watching Live Lunch Break, streaming at theday.com. My name is Rick Coster, and we are privileged today to have our guest, Brant Taylor from Danielson. Those are two really cool songs that you started with. Thank you. One of them's a new one. Yep. yep Montana Moon. Because some people get to go to Montana. <laughs> the rest of us just toil here in obscurity. Um, Montana's beautiful. It's lovely out there. It's a beautiful place, and uh, I was lucky that my friend Buffalo uh, let me go out there on a road trip with him. It was a wonderful time. So you were telling me you went to the largest powwow in the United States? Yep, the Crow Fair is the largest annual powwow in the U.S., and it's amazing. I, I, uh, I, uh, words can't describe it. And, well, you described it in a three-and-a-half-minute song. That's very good. <laughs> or at least part of the experience. Um, you started playing at the age of nine, and... A lot of kids get told, or maybe they even ask, I want to take piano lessons, or you're going to take piano lessons, or violin, or whatever. That's one aspect of a young musical education. It's quite another when someone discovers music at that age, and it just hits like a lightning bolt, and it's in your DNA, and it's like you're going to be a musician, and that's sort of what happened to you, right? Well, it kind of, believe it or not, there's a little of the violin thing in there. I oh, actually, really? I was, I was encouraged to play the violin, and uh, my, my father owned a bunch of wonderful guitars. He didn't play much, but he, he played some, and uh, I was always interested in playing those. My mother, she wanted the violin for some reason, so I tried, and uh, it, it just didn't work out. <laughs> it was it was just bad noises, so <laughs> so the guitar came after that, and that's, that's how that went. <laughs> well. You have, there's quite a lot of, of uh, you know, anybody that grows up at any point from the time the Beatles got here that wants to be a musician has got a million guitar influences to choose from. Um, there's a lot of the standard ones, you know, I grew up listening to Hendrix and Clapton or whatever, all the way up to Jack White now, I suppose. But then the path, the more you get into it, the more you discover Tell me a little bit about who you listen to and who influenced it. Well, you know, I, I definitely listen to some of the classics like Hendrix and Stevie Ray Vaughan, obviously. I mean, he's an amazing player, one of my favorites. Uh, recently, I've gotten into some more underground guys. Uh, there's a guy named Duke Levine out of Boston, a okay. uh, great telly picker. Um, and he doesn't just do the country rockabilly stuff. He does some jazz with okay. it, no, all on a telly. Uh, there's a guy, another guy named Matt Ray out of New York, uh, another great player. So I've kind of been listening to a lot of these underground guys and sort of neat to see what some of the other guys are doing that aren't, you know, ten levels above what I'm doing. They're just kind of the next notch up, you know, <laughs> something tangible. So When you say ten levels above, I hope you're not referring to technique, but perhaps maybe... A, audience <laughs> at this point. Maybe audience. So. Yeah, because um, you've got a good style, man. You're a good player. Thank you very much. Um, when you talk about those new guys, when you're listening to someone you've just discovered, how does that affect your songwriting? Because you'll hear a lot of people say, well, I reached a certain level of virtuosity, and then I sort of had to shut down listening to other people because it was interfering with my creative process. Does that make any sense? I, it does. I think you can... You can take little bits and things from, from different people as inspiration, but I think, you know, you, you want to stick to your core idea because you're never going to, I mean, you may try to play as, as much as you can like B.B. King, but you're always going to end up sounding like you no matter where you play. So, But it's nice to have the influence of different players and just see, you know, what techniques work for you, you know, that you can, 
you know, I don't want to say mimic, but that you can add to your repertoire of, of tricks, I guess. Well, your songs are terrific, and uh, it'd be great uh, here on Live Lunch Break if we could hear a few more from Brent Taylor. Absolutely. This is another relatively new one. It's called So Long. I'm in blind.
Key. 
offshore, out in the sound, your island getaway awaits. With so much to do and see, a block island getaway is now closer than ever. Where an island escape is yours at goblockisland.com. So literally, we're changing deeds. You're using your house at an agreed upon number towards a down payment for the purchase here. It couldn't be much easier, really. We believe in the art of handcrafted furniture. Workbench built in the USA to your specifications. The Cloder Farms Keystone Collection. Furniture handmade just for you. And see what we're building for you. Do not remotely be dismayed or dissuaded by the fact that occasionally in life we have to deal with pesky alternate tunings. And that's what Brant's doing right now. We've got Brant Taylor from Danielson with us on live lunch break. My name is Rick Coster and thanks for joining us. And <laughs> he's going into a, a drop D tuning, I believe. So uh, bear with us. I'll remind you that next week we have Jacob Haller uh, at noon on Thursday. And have we been on a year already, Peter? Almost a year coming up. And what I was hoping was to invite anybody out there who wants to contribute like a deli tray and some booze and stuff for our one year anniversary, we'd be happy to take it here at Live Lunch Break. Now, I'm going to start asking you a question while you're tuning. Uh, oh, it's just good, right? Is the detuning the, the one where you can just bar a chord up and you down? You can. It's a ma major chord, so you, you can bar it up and down. It's great for slide. So why too. wouldn't anybody just always do that? Because well, they get, shh, that's a secret. <laughs> That'd take my job. <laughs> Speaking of your job, you work a lot. You work in a solo acoustic format. Yes. You work with two different bands that mm -hmm. are essentially at not at your beck and call, but depending on what part of the country you're in. Yeah. How hard is it in this day and age to make a living playing? And how does, you decided to go this route rather than try to keep one band on the road. Talk about that. Um, you know, it, 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 the work comes and goes. Uh, it's, you know, this winter in particular was a little scary for a minute there. A lot of, uh, well, two or three bars that I, I usually play at closed down, and it looked oh, like it was getting bad. And then, um, you know, January hit, and it got better again. So it's it's kind of always like that. Um, I'm fortunate enough to have some really wonderful musicians to work with, and uh, and we try to keep each other in the loop about different bars to play, um, you know, for, the, for bands or solo gigs. Um, and it's nice sometimes I can play an early gig during the day and then one at night, and that's that's kind of how I keep myself going. Describe the repertoire. I mean, obviously you have a wealth of original material. Do you do you play cover tunes if it's required? Or? Yeah, sometimes you know I like to stick to more kind of rootsy bluesy stuff. Live, but you know, with the solo gigs, I do I, I try to just do covers that I enjoy here and I yeah. enjoy playing. Um, and the same with the bands, you know. Um, Speaking of original material, you have been working for a while on what will be your first CD. Yes. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, uh, I've been uh, working on it, recording it at my good friend Mike Whitney's studio in Groton. Um, who, uh, Mike is not only a great engineer, but a, a wonderful, wonderful tube amp builder, uh, uh, repairman, uh, and a great friend of mine. Um, and so we've been working on the tracks. We're up to about 11 or 12 now that are done and ready to go. and. Uh, we're going to try to get them printed soon, finish the mixes and everything, and we're very excited about it. I would say that's a pretty exciting uh, moment. When yeah. you, you know what you're going to call the album yet? I'm not sure yet. That's uh, kind of a working title. We we post well, Online is posted as Out on a Ledge, which is one of the songs. Right. I, I don't know if that'll be the final album title, but we'll see. I'd like to point out that I re requested off the air Out on the Ledge, but do you think Brant would do that for me? No. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. Actually, he was very flattered that I requested it, but it's not something that the format of the original acoustic thing is ready for yet, so I was just sort of being ludicrous as I usually am. All right, want to do uh, some more? Absolutely. Brant Taylor. Hi, 
God, this is a song of only is good. Quick minute for a shout out to John Van Ness, Mike Whitney, and Spindrift Guitars for the bar. This beautiful Taylor.
pretty clear that um, we had something to offer that other listings, other agents' listings did not have to offer. We offered them the opportunity to um, sell their home, get their home sold in a very slow, tough market. Come to Cloder Farms. Lose yourself in the possibilities for your home, yard, heart, and soul. And see what we're building for you. Offshore, out in the sound, your island getaway awaits. Yes, Block Island beckons. With so much to do and see, a Block Island getaway is now closer than ever. Ride the high-speed Block Island Express from New London on one of four daily departures. Where an island escape is yours at GoBlockIsland.com. That's GoBlockIsland.com. Hey, you are watching live lunch break, uh, streaming as I speak from theday.com. Thank you for spending some time with us. My name is Rick Coster, and we are here with Danielson's very fine guitarist songwriter, Brant Taylor. Um, I say from Danielson, and that's accurate, but the last two songs before the break betrayed a little bit of Mississippi, and you lived in Hattiesburg for a while, so surely at some point John Hurt and Reverend Gary Davis oh, and stuff must have crossed your path. Absolutely, Mississippi, Fred McDowell too. Yeah. I, I I love that stuff. I that's that's some of my favorite things to listen to. Uh, Keb Mo is another one. I've really been digging yeah. on a lot of Keb Mo. Um, and I always feel at home down there too. Yeah, well, that's a, there's the food alone can be that Absolutely. to you. Absolutely. <laughs> you are going to, uh, you, I, I guess we can talk about this. You've been offered a really nice slot coming up. Yes. 
yeah. at the Mystic Blues Festival. I'm, I'm really excited about it. Uh, June 30th, uh, I'm going to be playing uh, in the afternoon around 3 o'clock between uh, Room Full of Blues and then uh, and before JMO's Jazz Band. JMO from the Almond Brothers. from the Almond Brothers. I mean, let's face it, that's a hell of a nice slot between <laughs> Room Full and JMO. Uh, it's not like they said show up at 7 a.m. while they're cleaning the porta potties and you can play 30 minutes then. You gotta <laughs> I've done those gigs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I guess most working musicians have. But so where where can folks see you in the near future? Uh well, um, we've been doing a weekly gig in Worcester at a place called Rivalries, and that's actually an open jam. So uh, any of you jammers, come on down, bring your guitars, drumsticks, whatever you want, and uh, it's on Shrewsbury Street in Worcester. Uh -huh. uh, so we do that every week. Um, and uh, Friday this week I'm playing with a new, newer trio. I'm playing with uh, just an organ player and a drummer. He plays the bass parts with his left hand. Nice. So, uh, and we're playing at a place called Bella's Bistro in Putnam on Friday night. All of these are, are makeable trips, people. The snow is over. Um, I was going to ask Brant if he would do one more song because we were alluding to his Deep South influences. I see he's got the slide on, so maybe he's going to go all Sonny Landreth <laughs> on us. Uh, so, one more from Brent Taylor. Alright, this is called Nose in the Air.
fabulous. Thank you so much, Brant Taylor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Another episode of Live Lunch Break. All these things that we've been doing for the past year are archived on uh, theday.com slash live lunch break. Uh, next week we've got Jacob Haller and make it a point to go see Brant Taylor. I'm Rick Coster. Thanks. See you next week. <laughs>